I'm going to ask all those connected to this sweet little fella to come up here and be with us. Bring them on there, Jason. I'm a... hey, y'all are not getting dedicated. Yeah, better give him to Mama. Praise the Lord. Just stand right here. I'm going to read some verses today. And um, I'm reading from Mark chapter 10, verse 13 through 16. I'm going to share a little bit, and then we're going to get, get done what needs to get done, good-looking fella. It says, Then they brought little children to him, that he might touch them. But the disciples rebuked those who brought them. But when Jesus saw it, most of this, when Jesus saw what they were doing, he was greatly displeased and said to them, Let the little children come to me. Do not forbid them, for of such is the kingdom of God. Assuredly, I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will by no means enter in. And he took them up in his arms, laid his hands on them, and blessed them. Praise God. I want to remind you that the dedication of a baby or a child does not invoke salvation. Does it make him a Christian or her a Christian? But it's just an outward sign of a parent's desire to see their child become blessed in the sight of God. Amen. And here's the thing. We understand that there is no greater responsibility on the planet Earth than the care of children. Children are innocent and able to care for themselves. Thus, they need us and they need our help. Amen. Yeah. He says amen. So this family is standing here today asking to receive our prayers, our support, our blessing, and ask the anointing of God to be up on this sweet young guy. You can tell he's already, a, he likes church. He's very comfortable in church. And I want to share real quick, the Lord gave me some insight this week. This is not anything new, but God showed me something this week that I got to share with you. Because I want to share uh, three little things you need to know about the family. If we want to see our children serve God, the Bible has different stories about people who had an influence on their family. And some are people you'd expect, others aren't. One of the most remarkable stories is the story of a, of a lady who wasn't real well respected, but her name was Rahab. And she showed mercy to the spies. And they said to her that whoever is in the house will be saved. And she brought her family into the house. The first thing you need to understand, if we want our children to serve God and grow up and live for Jesus, we need to keep them in the house. Keep them in the house of God. There was safety in the house of God. You say, well, I don't want to make them. Well, you remember when you used to make them go to sleep because they didn't want to go to sleep? You wanted to? Didn't change them. Say, I'll never sleep in my life. I don't want to ever be a sleeper. When they become teenagers, they become professional sleepers. And... Uh, we need to get our children in the house of God because there's safety in the house of God. Rahab saved her house because she brought them into the house. And as we bring our children to the house of God, whether they like it or not sometimes, there's blessing and safety. Second person that we learned about who saved his house was a man who very famous named Noah. And Noah saved his whole family. And you know how he did it? He turned them into ark builders. He taught them about building the ark. And together as a family... They saved their family through the building of this ark. So the first thing we know we need to do for our kids is we need to make sure they're in the house of God. Second thing is give, keep them working in the house of God. Five, let them have ownership. My, my boys, they can tell you, as soon as they could do something, we gave them something to do. We had them, whether, whether it was changing a transparency or helping us clean the church or helping us remodel and paint, they've been working in the church as long as they can remember. And I believe there's something about being in the house of God and working as part and taking ownership that it gives you, a, it cements you in the kingdom of God. You'll find out around here that I never turn down free labor. If you want to do something from the Lord, for the Lord, I'll put you to, to work. Third, third thing I want to share with you is a biblical principle. And it's not necessarily a character, but it's a story, Jesus. He told about a son who wanted his money now. And he left home. Took all that money and he wasted it. And he found himself in the pig's pen. You say, what about my children if they get away from the Lord? I found out something as I, I, I got this revelation this week and it blessed me. It's something called the prodigal's advantage. You know what the prodigal's advantage is? He knows the way home. Hallelujah. He may be away from home, but he knows how to get back home. 
So he, for you that's, that's giving your kids to God, and maybe they're not wanting to chase after him right now, they know the way home. This little fella is getting taught the way home. And in the name of Jesus, we're going to pray and believe that he's never a prodigal. But the prodigal has the advantage to know how to get back to the house where there's safety and provision and thank God. So I'm going to ask these... Now, I just had to throw that in. I felt like preaching a little bit. So I threw those three points in for you. But I want to ask this family some questions and then we're going to ask you as a church some questions. Same one I ask every family. But here they are. Do you promise before God and these witnesses that you will raise this child in the fear of the Lord? Do you promise to be examples of godliness and live a life that promotes holiness and righteous living? Do you promise to endeavor to lead him early to accept Jesus Christ as his personal Lord and Savior? Do you rededicate your home to the Lord as a place of Christian environment for your child? Now this is a question for everybody. So congregation, I'll ask you four questions then we'll answer them all together. Okay, first question I'm asking us as a church Church, do you promise to be a place of safety, love, and acceptance for this child? Second one I'm going to ask, do you promise to display Christian, the Christian life as an honorable and holy thing? And then thirdly, church, do, we off, uh, do you offer your experience, your knowledge, and spirituality as a resource to these parents and to this child? And lastly, do you pledge to, be, to come beside this family in prayer? And the church says... Amen. We do. Yes. So, we got that took care of. I'm going to get to hold him. I like that. I like holding sweet kids that like me. And so far, he's been my buddy. He's let me hold him. Come here, buddy. Yeah, and he smiled too. I, he's, he, he's just a happy guy. Well, I'll get worried. Maybe we can get a good picture. Hey, let's get photogenic. Look at everybody. Good job. Now, we're going, everybody, let's stand together and just point your hand toward this family and pray with me. Dear Jesus, right now, we bless this fine young man. I thank you for him. I thank you that Jan has the hand of God on his life. I release blessing. Lord, we position angels and the grace of God around him. May he grow up under the anointing. May the house of God be a second nature to him. May he grow up and serve you with all of his might and live for you all the days of his life. May he recognize the presence of the Lord. May he recognize the blessings of God. And Lord, may he know that God's with him. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. And the church said, amen. amen. Praise the Lord. And we have a little token of our appreciation for this fella. Oh, it was kind of, I tell you what, it sure was fun shopping for this. I told Carlos, I think we're grandparent ready. It was a blast <laughs> shopping for kids stuff. You may be seated. God bless you. Give the Lord a good hand clap of praise. Hallelujah.